Barakatha Hao, Barakatha Yahweh Shah, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shah. All praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashim Rakaka Dash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah being the name of His only begotten Son, who they ignorantly call Jesus Christ. Now the scriptures give a clear difference between the true prophets and the false prophets. Because the strategy that the prophets would use is written down. So what, what did the real prophets do? What did the true prophets do? And what did the false prophets do? Now let me get Proverbs 28, tw 28 and one. Proverbs 28 and 1, it say, Salaki. It say, The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous is bold as a lion. You see, the wicked, they not going to be bold. They going to be like a, a, a snake. Sneaky, tricky. They going to run game. They going to talk with sweet language. They going to try to sweet talk you. See? But the righteous going to come out like a lion roaring on you. But see, that's what the false teachers that they've been teaching us to be solved. Now let me get the let me get the false prophet. Let me get what these false prophets will do. Romans chapter sixteen. Romans chapter sixteen. Romans chapter 16, verse 18, it says, For they that are such serve not the Lord Yahweh, I mean, not the Lord Yahweh Shah Mashiach, but their own belly. See, that's one thing. The false prophets always looking for money, always looking for some kind of benefit. It says that by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. See, they're going to give you good words. Give me some money and God's going to bless you. See, God's going to put a blessing on your life. They're always trying to give you good words and fair speeches. That's the total opposite of what the real prophet's going to do. Let's get another example of the real prophets. Who's going to be bold as a lion? Isaiah 50, 58 and 1. It say, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. See, the real prophets is going to come out and they're going to correct their people. They're going to correct the Israelites, the children of Jacob. That's what the real prophet is going to do. They're not coming with good words or fair speeches. They're not going to flee when you bring up a subject. They're going to correct you with the scriptures. Now, Isaiah, no, let's... Proverbs, let me go back to Proverbs. Give another example of the true prophets. Proverbs chapter 1, starting at verse 20, it says, Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. See, wisdom is going to cry without holding back. 
is going to be bold like a lion. 21, it says, She crieth in the chief place of concourse in the opening of the gates. In the city, she uttereth her word, saying, Proverbs 1, 22, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. See, this is what wisdom is going to do. Let's see, in the same book, Proverbs, let's see what the false prophets will do. Proverbs 26 and 5. 25. Proverbs 26 and 25. Let's see what the false prophets will do. When he speak fair, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart. See, they gonna come with speaking fair, meaning they trying to sweet talk you. God loves you. He loves everybody. See, Proverbs 26 and 28, it say a lying tongue hated those that are afflicted by it. And a flattering mouth worketh ruin. See, that's what these cricket pork chop eating pastors do. They gonna get on TV, they gonna get in the, in the, on the pulpit, and they gonna flatter all day long. They gonna tell you and tell anybody, no matter what they doing, that God gonna bless them. Let me get another example of these false prophets. This is what the false prophet is going to do. Jeremiah 23, verse 16. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Listen not unto the words of the prophets, that prophesy unto you, they that make you vain, they speak a vision of their own heart. See, they get on stage and they say, oh, the Lord told me that you're going to have this blessing, and the Lord told me this going to happen, and he told me this, and he told me that. But what does, what, what do they supposed to do? It say they speak a vision of their own heart, meaning their own mind, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. See, it's a rule. When you're dealing with these scriptures, it's a rule how you're supposed to come. You don't supposed to speak out your own heart. Let me get Isaiah 8 and 20. It says, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. See, when you come out of this word, you got to stick to the law and the testimony. Let me give Peter. First Peter 4 and 11. It says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. Meaning, let him speak out of the word. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. That God in all things may be glorified through your house, shall Mashiach. See, they get on stage like T.D. Snakes and Creflo Holler and Joel Osteen, they gonna tell you all kind of words out of their own mind. They're not gonna pull one scripture. 
This is what the false prophet, this is how they operate. Now let me get Proverbs 25. This is another thing that go along with the wicked flee. The wicked flee when no man pursue it. But the righteous is bold as a lion. Proverbs 25 and verse 9. It says, Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. Debate your cause with your neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. See, that show you who the false prophets is and who is the wicked. The wicked is going to flee. They're they going to say, oh, you don't post to debate the Bible. You don't post to debate. You don't post to argue the Bible. But that's not what the Bible says. It says, debate thy cause with your neighbor himself. That means if you got a disagreement, you're supposed to let it be known. Look at verse, chapter 27, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Open rebuke is better than secret love. See, when you openly correct somebody, when you openly debate your cause, that's better than love. See, this is what these pork chop eating plantation Christianity pastors that's what they're going to tell you. Jehovah wickedness. Oh, you don't suppose? Okay, we're going to come back later. We don't, we don't debate. We don't debate. We don't do. We don't do debates. But the Bible says debate your cause with your neighbor. Let's get some more of what these false prophets is going to do. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 6, it says, For even your brethren and the house of thy father, even they that dealt treacherously with you, yeah, they have called a multitude after you. Believe them not, though they speak fair words unto you. See, that's the strategy of these false prophets. They're trying to speak sweet words to you. They're trying to sweet talk you. This is what they do. Now in the Apocrypha, in the Apocrypha chapter 6, verse 5, it, this is what, especially the so-called white man and the, and the main deceiver on earth, this is the strategy he going to use. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 5 in the Apocrypha. Sweet language will multiply friends and a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greeting see that's why they come and they talking all sweet to you trying to sweet talk you like you a woman like a man do a woman trying to sweet talk a woman that's what false prophets do they're not going to come and try to correct you with anything when this is what the word is for, correction. Same, same book, Ecclesiastes chapter 13. 
13 and 6. This is what the, these false prophets, Christianity, plantation, this is what the plantation Christianity, this is how they operate. Say, so if he have need of you, he will deceive you. See, that's what, it, that's what it's all about. If he have need of you, he will deceive you and smile upon you and put you in hope. See, they're going to tell you a dream, sell you a dream like a pimp. That's what politicians and the Christian and the preachers do. He will speak, speak to you fair and say, what do you want? See, this is the strategy of the false prophets. This is the strategy of the false prophets. Let me get Psalms 28 and 3. Psalms 28 and 3. It says, Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors. But mischief is in their heart. See, they're going to come with, oh, peace, 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 like they did the Native Americans, but they got wickedness in their heart. They're going to come with their medical system and try to tell you they're trying to save you, but they really got mischief in their hearts, and they got another agenda. This is the strategy of the wicked, the false prophets the adversary of God. They're going to try to sweet talk you. Good luck. And this sweet talking is just like a woman. Look at what Proverbs 7 and 21 says. It says, with her, with her much fair, much fair speech, she calls him to yield, and with, with the flattering of her lips, she forced him. See, this is what people do when they're trying to trick you on something. They come with flattering lips. They gonna flatter you and say how wonderful you are and how good you look and how good you talk and everything. They gonna talk nice to you because they looking for something. See? That's the, that's the big misconception, what love is. Look at what love is in the Bible. They say open rebuke is better than secret love. Somebody openly correcting you, that's love. Not ignoring what you got going on. Openly correcting you to your face. They gonna fight you to save your life. And this is what the whole, this is what the Bible is about. The Bible is not, is not about fair speech and, and so-called talking uh, sweet words to people. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof. See, reproof is correction. The next verse going to say it. For correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished 
unto all works. See, it's not for to be sweet talking somebody when they come in your church trying to get their money. It's about correcting their actions. Look at Titus chapter 1 verse 13. It says, this witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. See, you want them to be sound in the faith. You're supposed to correct them sharply. Put that pork chop down. Stop eating a nasty, filthy pig. See, that's what you're supposed to do. You don't put the oh, I'm telling you, please just just don't eat the pig. It's not healthy. Put it down. Crabs, lobsters, shrimp, sea roaches. They eat the garbage out of the ocean. The ocean's so dirty, the animals, the sea animals, diving out of the ocean, committing suicide. Because the so-called devil is getting all the seafood out of the, the, the unclean seafood, the scavenger seafood, he getting it out of the ocean, and the ocean is so dirty and filthy, this animal is jumping out of the ocean committing suicide. See, that is, let me get that in Re Revelation. Revelation 11, verse 18. It says, The nations were angry, and your wrath is come. And at the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that you should give reward unto your servants, the prophets. It says, And to the saints. See, the, the servants, the prophets, is the saints. They're the same thing, the children of Israel. It says, And that and them that fear your name, small and great, and shall destroy them which destroy the earth. See, these people in the project is not destroying the earth. They don't got power to destroy the earth. They can't afford a canoe, not alone a, a freaking boat to go out there in the ocean. These Negro, these Hispanics in the projects, don't have power to control to destroy the earth. Only person with the power to destroy the earth is the so-called white man and his governments, the EU. See, these are the people that got power to destroy the earth. Not no Negroes in captivity a hundred something years, fifty some years out of slavery which still is in, still in slavery. Now who are these servants of prophets? Let's see who is the servants of prophets who gonna prophesy in the right way and gonna be bold as a lion. Who is these individuals? Amos chapter two, verse 11. And I'll raise up of your sons for prophets, and of your men for Nazarites. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel? Says the Lord. See, the children of Israel, he was going to raise their sons up for prophets. He wasn't going to raise up no, no other nation. Let's get another one on that. Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Who was he going to raise up to be the real true prophet that wasn't going to come out and speak, try to talk, sweet talk people and steal their money like these Christianity pastors? Deuteronomy 29 and 29. Now, who, who was Moses talking to? Let me get verse 1. These are the words of the covenant with which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. Okay, this is what, this is who children they talking about. 
Deuteronomy 29 and 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. See, nothing is going to be revealed to any other nation but the children of Israel. This is a promise that the Lord gave to Moses to give to the children of Israel. He's only going to reveal what's going on in the world unto them. Let's go to, back to Amos chapter 3, verse 7. It says, Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto the servants, the prophets. So the Lord is not going to do nothing. Nothing is going to get done. Nothing is going to happen unless the prophets know about it. Unless he revealed these things to the prophets. And the prophets is not going to come out and sweet talk nobody. Isaiah 53 verse 1. It says, Who have believed our report? And to who is the arm of the Lord revealed? It's only revealed to the children of Israel. Now, Yahweh Shah, who they ignorantly called Jesus Christ, this is what he told his disciples in Matthew chapter 13. Starting at verse 10, he said, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speaketh you unto them in parables? Verse 11. It says, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. See, these other nations, they're not given the secrets. And what, what you going to need that, to get the secrets? How are the children of Israel going to get the secrets? How is the children of Israel going to get the secrets? John chapter 6, verse 63. It says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. But the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. See, the words is the spirit. Not you howling and dancing and falling on the floor and somebody raggedy behind church. These words in this book is the spirit. So how is the children of Israel going to get the spirit? It's through the words. Now when you go to Joel chapter 2, verse 28. It says, and it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. How is he going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh? And your son and your daughter shall prophesy. And your old man shall dream dreams and your young man shall see vision. How is he going to pour out his spirit on all flesh? Let's go to Daniel. Daniel chapter 12, starting at verse 9. It says, And he said, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the time of the end. So the spirit, the words, was sealed up until the time of the end. So this is how the Most High was going to give his Holy Spirit. This is how he was going to pour out his Spirit upon all flesh. Now let's get 2 Ezra chapter 6, starting at verse 20. It, it, it spells it out. It says, When the world that shall begin to vanish away 
shall be finished. See, that's the time of the end. And when the world that shall, shall begin to vanish away shall be finished, then I will show these tokens. The books shall be opened before the firmament, and they all shall see together. See, that's how he pouring out his spirit on all flesh. They all will see the books together. They all would see the words, which is the spirit. And how would they see the word? Because the prophets will bring out the true understanding. The prophets will bring out the word. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 1. Behold, speak you in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in your mouth, says the Lord. See, the Lord is putting these words in our mouth. The word, the Lord is putting these words of prophecy in our mouth. See, everything is dictated through prophecy. It says, verse 2, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Verse 3, fear not the imagination against you. Let not the incredulity of them trouble you, or the unbelief of them trouble you, that speak against you, verse 4, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Verse 5, behold, says the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. See, these plagues, we can see it from sea to shine and sea, from every land in the whole world, we see these plagues coming upon the world because the children of Israel is speaking prophecies. He put the words in their mouth. I will bring plagues upon the world. The sword, famine. See, famine is happening. The stores is drying up because the children of Israel is speaking prophecy. Death and destruction. Verse 16, verse 6, Second Edges 15, verse 6. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful word works, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. This is why he's bringing plagues upon the earth, because wickedness. Second Ezra chapter 2 verse 8. It says, For many great miseries shall be done to them in the last days shall that dwell in the world. Because they have walked in great pride. See, pride is, is somebody feeling so important. They feeling like they better than the average person.